The DIY Guide for Girls presents how to build an HD TV antenna for your TV at home. Apparently, playing scientist is not just an opportunity to accessorize or role play. You may not know that there is a huge gap between the genders when it comes to science and math in the USA, and girls are basically undernourished as far as science is concerned. And I freaking love science. I didn't used to. I majored in English, and I'm just basically rediscovering how cool science is. I mean, it's literally like magic. So I'm really excited to share this with you, and uh, let's get to work. Just like you need to wear the right shoes for every occasion, you should also go into projects with the right supplies, especially the right tools. My boyfriend's a really handy guy, and he had all of these things around the house, with the exception of the jewelry pliers, which are mine. But pictured in the photo is a piece of wood for mounting the whole antenna, a yardstick, any kind of ruler works just fine, Phillips head screwdriver, because I have Phillips head screws, washers, got a hammer, I've got wire cutters and strippers, it's the same thing. Um, I've got just a regular pair of clamp pliers, Got a smaller copper wire that's uh, encased in plastic, which is what the wire strippers are for. I've got copper tubing, which makes the main part of the antenna. A Sharpie, as well as an antenna template, which I'll picture later. You'll also need one of these babies, which is a transformer or a boulon, I think. And basically it connects from the antenna to your television. And you should recognize this as the coaxial cable that goes from your antenna to your television. I put a list of all these supplies below so that you can just check it all off. Lastly, I've got this template for a fractal antenna, which I'll explain in a moment. I got it online, and here's the website so you can look up the template as well. And here's the link for the template. Guess a guy named William Ruckman runs the site. Thank you, William. It was so helpful. If my voice is bothering you, you can actually just go on his site and look at his directions. They're pretty good, but if you want a little more in-depth explanation, keep on watching. So what is a fractal and why would I want to make a fractal antenna? Well, first, a fractal is a geometric pattern that's repeated at ever smaller scales to produce irregular shapes and surfaces that cannot be represented by classical geometry. So you didn't see this stuff in math class. Fractals are used especially in computer modeling of irregular patterns and structures in nature, just like a snowflake. Now, in order to understand why a fractal antenna is more efficient than a regular antenna, you have to understand a little bit about antennas in general. So here's a chart that shows the radio frequency spectrum, and we're looking at radio waves. So our television is transmitting signals through radio waves. And as you can see, within the little radio wave area, there's TV, that tiny little space right there. Television stations are each assigned a different frequency at which they broadcast in order to not end up with any overlap. If you've ever used walkie-talkies at an amusement park, you know how important it is to designate what frequency you're using so you don't end up talking to somebody else's mom. So what is the relationship between a frequency and a wavelength? Well, they're inversely proportional. If you increase the distance between the troughs or peaks of a wave, you'll decrease the frequency with which each with which each trough or peak passes a fixed point. So a lower frequency means a longer wavelength. So a wavelength cycle is the distance from neutral to the peak, to neutral, to the trough, to neutral. Your antenna is a receiver, so it has to receive a wavelength, or a half a wavelength, or a quarter of a wavelength. So the distance or length of your rods are really important. Here's a drawing of a regular traditional antenna, and obviously you can see how the different lengths correspond with the different channels. Now here's a drawing of a fractal antenna, which you can see the different lengths that we're talking about are actually inlaid within the shape of the fractal. So it can, it can receive more frequencies than your regular antenna in less space. And here's a little depiction of that from instructables.com has another HDTV antenna set of instructions. These fractal antennas are used in cellular phones. Here's a, a close-up of one of those. They're really compact, really sophisticated, um, and fractals are really, really cool things. So if you're interested at all, I highly recommend that you look it up and do a little bit of extra research into it. Maybe get some fractal art. It's really pretty. I digress though. So in order to build your antenna, you need to know the different frequencies at which your channels are being transmitted. You want your antenna's length to correspond with the median frequency that you're trying to receive. 
Hopefully that makes sense. I found this chart on the internet that shows the frequencies at which the channels are broadcast in Los Angeles, where I live. You'll see that the highlighted channels from 7 to 13 uh, average out to 195 megahertz frequency. So now I just need to calculate the length of the wave in order to have it correspond with my antenna copper lengths. Luckily, the internet means we don't actually have to do any math as csgnetwork.com has a frequency wavelength calculator that let me just plug in that 195 and it told me the length in inches that I needed to make my copper wire. And I'm talking about the tube portion. Um, so I got, uh, what did I get? 15.138 is a quarter wavelength, which is what I made all four of my pieces. So when you add all four lengths of the fractal shapes together, that comes out to the length of one full wavelength. Copper is soft. Where I'm the strongest girl in the world. You also need to subdivide each of your copper lengths into eight parts that are equal. Now the sample here has one inch as the sections. My length is a little bit longer, so I come out to about 1.9 inches per section, which I designated, as you can see in this picture, with little Sharpie marks. And Sharpies are great. Highly recommended. Now you should have about four Harry Potter wands that look kind of like this you're going to bend them into the shape on the template. So I'm going to take my first little mark right there. I'm going to grab my jewelry pliers because they're my favorite and they're my hand size. I'm going to bend a little bit of muscle here. You can see I start getting a nice bend in there. I'm going to do this back and forth until I get that shape. So I'm going to just do that really quick and fast forward so you don't have to watch the whole thing. My little zigzag tiara is all finished, so now I'm going to bend it into that fractal shape. Get my template out. I find the template really helpful because I didn't need to get out one of those little devices to measure my angle. I honestly just put my piece down on here and I made sure that the angles matched up. So it seemed to work just fine. Okay, that's side one. All done. Again, this doesn't need to be like absolutely perfect. It just needs to be functional. So, you know, do your best, but... Don't stress, it's supposed to be fun. Okay, and there we are, we have our shape. See mine's just a little bit crooked. So, take my hammer, hold on. There's something super cathartic about hitting shit with hammers. <laughs> okay, so now it's going to be like a cooking show, and I'm going to show you the finished product after it's baked, um, just to show you how I, I put it together. I know, it's not super pretty. Uh, it doesn't need to be out for company or anything. Now, the template is a lot smaller than the size that I made, so I just increase the scale just like you'd increase a recipe. Oh, it's much easier to explain with the picture, huh? Um, okay, so the last thing, or the second to last thing, are the two pieces of wire on either side. You can see there, the two vertical pieces of wire. Um, I had an insulated copper wire that I had to strip of the insulation with my wire strippers, so I did that. I made two 12-inch lengths, and you can make whatever length you think makes sense for your distance. I wrapped uh, the first piece of wire around the top screw. I ran it alongside the middle screw so it came into contact with the middle screw and then I wrapped it around the bottom screw. And then I screwed everything down so that the small pieces of copper were in touch with the big pieces of copper and they're also in touch with the screw. So that's how your conductivity you know, works. And then I did the same thing on the opposite side. The transformer in the middle has two wires. Each wire has a prong. That prong slides around the, the screw and comes into contact with the wire that runs from top to bottom. So now here you have your connector right here for your coax cable. I don't know if you can see it, but anyway, it's there. Really easy. And because I'd like to learn a little bit more about math and formulas, um, here is the formula. Instead of using that little conversion chart on the internet, if you wanted to actually calculate your frequency to wavelength. So um, I'm really proud of my little thing, and you want to see how it works with the television? Because I'm going to show you. Here's my TV on channel 11. It's my little antenna on the mantle. Okay, we want to channel 11, we want to channel 9. Beautiful. We got number 7. 
We got number five, even though that wasn't one of my target ones, comes in great and I can watch some Mori. So actually I actually have a lot more channels than I, I had aimed for. It's pretty cool. I'm actually gonna program it up right now. Um, and now it's programmed for another antenna that I bought online and I actually think this one works better. So this is Jillian for DIY Guide for Girls. Thanks so much for watching and I hope you can build your own antenna. I actually have a really great sense of accomplishment today, so hopefully you will too. Okay, have a good one. Bye-bye.